Hello, we've got three ways of interpreting a given interest rate. We could interpret it as the required rate of return, the discount rate, or as the opportunity cost. In this video, we will elaborate on the required rate of return interpretation by going through an example. Before doing that, as a general comment, I'd like to say that these interpretations are conceptual ones, in the sense that even if you get them wrong, it will not affect your calculations. So if after going through them, they initially seem confusing, don't worry too much. They'll make sense over time as you enhance your financial knowledge. So starting off with the required rate of return interpretation, what we are saying over here is that assuming that we are in equilibrium and given the future cash flows promised by a certain financial instrument and its price in the market, we can derive an interest rate associated with that financial instrument. And that interest rate can be interpreted as the required rate of return on that financial instrument. Let's go through our example. Assume we have a bond. And bond is a type of security trading in financial markets for those completely new to finance. Bonds are generally classified as fixed income securities. And that's why we'll deal with them in detail in that module section. So this bond is trading for $80. That is $80 is its price, its value today, which I denote with P, subscript 0, P for price, and 0 for time 0. This, since it is resting at time 0, is the present value as well, by definition. This bond promises to pay $100 at T equals 1, that is in a year's time. This $100 payment is called the face value, or par value, or the principal amount of the bond in bond terminology. Now I don't want you to feel overwhelmed by these different names, and I certainly don't want you to spend any time trying to memorize them. As you expose yourself to more and more financial problems, they'll naturally stick in your head. So continuing from where we left off, this bond promises to pay $100 at t equals 1. Therefore, we can also interpret this payment as a future value at time 1. And this is what I did when I put our data on the timeline to make things more visual for you. By the way, a bond doesn't always need to pay in a year's time. Also, it doesn't need to make just one payment. This just happens to be the case in this example. I'm just trying to keep things simple over here in order to help you understand this interest rate interpretation. So given the price and face value of the bond, what is the implicit interest rate? And that interest rate is what we previously interpreted as the required rate of return on this bond. Let's solve this. In previous videos, we established that the present value equals the future value over 1 plus r to the nth. This will guide us in our solution. So far, in the applications we saw, we are given r, and we solved for either the present value or the future value, depending on what we needed and what information we already had. Over here, we will do something slightly different. We will use this formula to solve for the rate R, since we have everything else. So the present value, which is the same as the price of 80, see the visual representation of our data, equals the bond's face value of 100, which in this case we also interpret as the future value at year 1, divided by 1 plus r to the first power. Why to the first power? Because our bond promises to pay in a year's time. That's why, after all, we also labeled the bond's face value as the future value in year 1. So how do we solve for r? Let's start by multiplying both sides of this equation by 1 plus r to the first power, which is the same as just 1 plus r. So 1 plus r times 80 equals 1 plus r times 100 over 1 plus r. And we've done something similar in another video in the past when trying to solve for the present value. What we do on one side of the equation, we also do on the other. So these 1 plus r cancel out. And we are left with 1 plus r times 80 equals 100. In similar fashion, let's now divide both sides by 80 something which will give us 1 plus r times 80 over 80 equals 100 over 80. So these cancel out, 
and we are left with 1 plus r equals 100 over 80. So what's left for us to do to get r is to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. Now these 1's cancel out from the left hand side. And finally we get r equals 100 over 80 minus 1 and this gives us r equals 0 0.25 which is the same as 25%. So this is our required rate of return for this bond. Put differently, this is the rate of return that the market requires to invest in this bond. We could extend the analysis and say that this bond must be an extremely risky one, as historically speaking, it is rare for a bond to have such a high required rate of return, let alone one that matures in just a year. But more on that type of analysis on the fixed income set of videos. Let's continue in the next video with our second interest rate interpretation, that of the discount rate.